Right, okay, how's it going everybody? It's Liam from Gaming Master Race here and welcome to the first of what's going to be many uh, Let's Plays to be honest. Um, I think I'm going to try and do as many of these as I possibly can but we'll just see how they go. Um, we're going to start off with a game that I recently covered in my top 10 PlayStation games and I, I, I think to me this is probably one of my favourite football management games as much as I do love the football management series, the football manager series. This to me just has a special place in my heart because, as I say, it's the first kind of um, football management game to use a 3D match engine. And to me, that felt like what I was doing was really making a difference. Like all my decisions were really making a difference. Not only that, but you can obviously change like, your stadium and everything like that. And it was just so, for me, it was really, really in depth. And I've never actually uh, seen anything quite like this before, um, especially on a console. I didn't think like this would. Uh, a game like this would even exist on console so yeah um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through um, we're gonna go for a career is what I'm gonna try and do um, so I will start with full staff um, I don't really want to be choosing my staff um, okay well it's gone straight to West Ham United and that's who I was gonna be um, we're gonna do a career with West Ham United um, the managerial clause is to finish mid position mid tables is so top 15 uh, let's go ahead and put my name in. Let's go ahead and use my full name. Just to give it that more uh, immersive kind of experience there. Liam Roberts. E quick start. No, we don't want a quick start. We're going to play the game. Um, so, one thing I will very much admit is that this is not going to generate a lot of views at all. And I know that for, for a fact. Um, it's an old game, not many people interested in it, and not many interested people interested in watching someone play a managerial game in which you have to make specific, like, take your time making decisions. Um, it's not the most exciting to a lot of people, but hey, I mean, you never know. I mean, to football fans, this might be interesting, um, and to LMA manager fans, hopefully it will be too. So it's a blast from the past. We're looking at the West Ham United team from the 99-2000 season, I believe. And um, so we've got Shaka Hislop in goal, Steve Potts, Stuart Pearce, um, and, uh, Marcus Vivian Foey, um, who, um, to my recollection, I think he passed away whilst playing football, um, I believe. Uh, Rio Ferdinand, John Monker, Steve Lomas, Frank Lampard, Ian Wright, Paolo Wanchot, Paolo Di Canio, uh, I believe that's Craig Forrest, uh, Ian Pearce, Scott Minto, Trevor Sinclair, Paul Kitson, Neil Ruddock, Michael Carrick, Joe Cole... Um, I'm not too sure his first name, M. Keller, um, Esabu, and Holligan. Again, not really too sure um, their first name. So I can't, those those three unfortunately do escape me. But uh, anyway, let's have a look. At, I mean, that's a strong. I mean, this is a great squad. I mean, I, I, you know, Stuart Pearce, Rio Ferdinand, you know, and what we've, uh, you know, Michael Carrick and Joe Cole there on the bench as well. Even Neil Ruddock, um, who at the time was 31 years old, um, superb defender. Um, but obviously we're going to be looking at keeping Paolo Di Canio in the squad. He was the strongest player. And obviously you've got these bars here to indicate how good the player is, um, which is a nice little visual aid there. We're not working with numbers, we're working with graphs to tell you how good a player is overall. Um, and you can kind of see how their diving is, your alertness, distribution, handling, saving, and all that is as well. Um, why it's missing um, so much there? Um, for a lot of these players I, I, is beyond me. I'm not really too sure. I mean, obviously, uh, I, I think maybe that's because it's specific to that. Yeah, okay. So it's specific to that player. Um, and you can see here um, that you can now um, compare tackling and marking, passing, etc. Um, but we'll just leave it with overall for the time being. Um, the squad is nothing, I'm not really going to worry about the squad straight off the bat because what I want to do is I want to select my formation and then I want to select how um, that squad's going to fit with that formation. So I'm going to start with 4-4-2, um, that is usually my most 
my favourite, my most go-to formation. It doesn't really leave us too exposed in in the middle, um, and it gives us a fair amount of defence. So obviously we're going to go with an attacking formation, um, an attacking mentality even to start with, and um, that's because I do like attacking football. Now our defensive tactics, um, we're not going to kind of mark anybody just yet, and aggressive normal. Um, we're going to stick with normal um, defending tactics, so don't press too hard. Attacking tactics, possession play, yep, measured. We don't want to go direct, we want to stay measured. Um, we do not want that Sam Allardyce um, approach, and yeah, this makes the most sense. Uh, you don't you, you want defenders to shoot near, you don't really want them shooting too far because their shot accuracy is not really going to be their strength at the end of the day. The defenders, their main goal is to worry about tackling midfielders, that's fine, and attackers far is also fine. I mean, you could even think about with attackers maybe going for them to go medium too, um, because you know, if they've got enough power to go far then you know they're probably going to have just as much power to go medium get a little bit closer but um you never know they might shoot close um as well so that's fine i'm going to stick with that um paolo de canio for free kicks ah now that's a question right there um how can we ascertain who is going to be the better player for things like free kicks so let me go to frank lampard and um, see, we've got control, shooting, pace, aggression. There's no free kick there. So, I mean, Decanio's pretty good, but Ian Wright's pretty good, and Frank Lampard is quite decent as well. I'd say Frank Lampard's probably on par with Decanio. So, let's give that role to Frank Lampard. Does it tell me what foot he is? Because I don't think it does. I don't think it gives me that information. It's quite limited, obviously, being PS1. Um, yeah, so shooting's okay. <sighs> okay, well, we'll leave it at Frank Lampard for both. Um, I just wanted to know where his stronger foot was going to be. He's actually, Ian Wright's speciality, it says, is um, penalty kicks. De Canio's, it says, is actually free kicks. Okay, fine. Let's give it to De Canio. We'll keep it at that. Easy speciality, according to the... Um, bottom right hand side there where you can see the smiley face, yellow and red cards and you've got the free kick specialist um, Paolo Wanchop, Ian Wright they are the specialists for um, uh, f uh, Ian Wright is the specialist for um, penalty kicks, John Moncur is a corner kick specialist, we'll leave that to him Steve Lomas is a captain, a leader so we'll leave him at that so it's pretty much done the work for me, to be perfectly honest. So now I'm just going to choose my squad. Um, this is training. I love the animations. Um, yeah. Can we change that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is... This is... Passing, tackling. Ian Pierce. Yeah, let's keep him with tackling. It's Rio Ferdinand. Let's keep him with tackling. What's he... So he's ta Rio Ferdinand's tackling is actually superb, and so is his marking. Um, so we'll leave as is. Stuart Pierce. He's old. You know, he's 37 years old. He's one year older than I currently am. Um, he's also a free kick specialist as well. But I, I am probably going to end up taking him out the squad at some point because um, he's old. Unfortunately, that's just the bottom. bottom that's the that's the truth. Uh, Michael Carrick, uh, his passing is not great. You know, his heading is not great either. We'll leave him with heading for the minute. And we'll probably take him on to to, to pass in at some point. Uh, we need to build that up. And this is fine for the time being. We'll leave that. There's no injuries. So let's check my squad. So we're looking at the 4-4-2 um, formation. So let's select my team. Um... Yeah, so I need to right. So Stuart Pearce, uh, Steve Potts is a central midfielder, a central defender, and a right defender. He looks like he's in the right defender position already. Stuart Pearce, number three, he's a left um, left defender, uh, left back. So that's fine. Marcus Vivian Fowey should not be there. Um, 
he should be in midfield. John Moncurry, central midfield. He is midfield, right midfield. Frank Lampard is central midfield. So, Rio Ferdinand, he's number five. He's in the right position by the looks of it. So, I need to swap out number six, John Moncur. That's fine. Let's get a defender there. Um, okay. So, John Moncur. Um... I'm probably going to swap him out for Ian Pearce then. So that should look right. There we go. So number 11 is Paolo Di Canio. So yeah, so with Di Canio, I'm going to put him with Paolo one chop and take off Ian Wright. Number 11, Ian Wright should be a left midfielder. So oh, that's a shame. Oh, that's a shame as well. Michael Carrick. And Joe Cole are both central midfielders. And who is a left midfielder? De Canio, but I want him up front. So, according to this, I don't have any left midfielders apart from De Canio. <laughs> it's no wonder why they put him there. Shit. Okay. So, um, okay. Well, let's let's leave it at that for now. Um, well, I mean, I don't want I don't want Paolo One Chop out of position or Ian Wright out of position there. So I'm going to need to substitute Ian Wright. And I don't want him out of position. I don't want any of these guys out of position. Um, I'm going to need to buy a left midfielder. Right, okay. I'm going to have to leave De Canio there because I don't want anybody out of position. Um, too far out of position. So I'll leave one chop and Ian Wright up front. Um, what we've got, we've got training. Well, I believe we've got our buyer player here. Oh, do we not have a youth squad? That we can steal from. Uh, no training select team. Okay, that's fine. So we've got, um, let's just get used to this here. So we've got the league table, our form table, league position graph, club details um, of specific clubs, um, star squad, previous match. We've got a transfer market, player search, loan player, scout player, buy sell. Ah, we do have a youth squad. <coughs> okay. Uh, so H Rowles. He's gonna be. He's like a like a. He's, he can play in any position in midfield, so he is gonna be the one we might want. So uh, okay, what's his overall rating? It doesn't say. Okay, well let's sign him anyway. Um, yeah, move this player into our squad. So he is gonna now be in our squad. Where's overall? There it is. Oh yeah, he's not great. Okay, we're going to need to buy someone then. How much money do we have? So, 10 million. Do we actually... Oh, agreed overdraft limit, 6 million, 10 million balance. So what they're telling me is that I've got 16 million or 10 million. What have I got? Ten million. Right, okay. So, <laughs> all I want is a left midfielder. So let's... Left or centre is fine. All divisions. I want them to be between 16 and 25. Relatively young. And transfer listed. So he's decent. So already we've got 5, 7 million here. from. Uh, so we've got this Volpe, Kobo. And you can see here that they're kind of overall dips and drops. So 24 years old. I tend to go for the youngsters because they can build upon what they've got so this Jorgensen here would probably be quite a good fit he plays at Bournemouth he's only 2.9 million um, so we'll put in an offer for this chap here we'll go for three and a half million we'll make that offer and we'll see if that accept that um, Upton Park's currently got a capacity of 26,014 obviously Upton Park is actually the location and the bowling ground is the official name of the stadium but we will look at probably um, improving this stadium at some point, but right now uh, we don't have the money. But as you can see, you got like a, you can change your depth of your stand. You can change uh, how many tiers you want. You can put whether you want boxes in there, whether you want them to have corners, and then you can change your style. So I, me personally, I, I really much like a, a rounded stadium um, with a roof. 
So maybe something like that would be nice. Um, so I'd probably go for something like that, but it obviously it would cost £10 million anyway. So we need to build our money up first before we can even think about that, because that costs more than we actually have available to us. Um, so, all right, let's, let's progress and we'll see how we get on. So... Um, we're probably, I don't even know if we've got friendly matches, I think it goes straight into the Premier League season if I'm perfectly honest. <clears throat> so August 99, yep the 99 to 2000 season, a little bit of loading. So we are currently 15 minutes into this video, um, I will try and make them um, between 15 minutes and 20 minutes long to keep them, um, you know, um, so you don't have to watch too much, you can do it in bits. Uh, so Bournemouth has accepted my offer. Um, we will go ahead and give him a wage. I don't know what he's currently earning. So, um, and back then, I'm guessing that you know, I don't know, maybe five thousand pounds is a lot of money. Let's give him. Um, let's give. Let's put him on six thousand. So this this is the thing. Getting used to back what they were on back then um, is so weird compared to now. Because obviously, if you were playing football manager now, you'd be looking at putting him on forty, fifty thousand pound a week. Whereas here, they're looking at six thousand pound a week. Um, let's make that offer of 6,000 and we'll leave the video there. So tune into part two to see if uh, our mate, uh, whatever his name is, Jorgensen, was it? Oh, they've got no messages. Uh, let's see if he um, accepts our offer. I'm going to see if he gets, uh, let me get his name again. Not Guerrero. Uh, yeah, Jorgensen. Uh, let's see if Jorgensen has accepted our offer. So tune in next time to find out. Thanks very much and see you then.